In this lesson, we're going to talk about domain and range of functions. Our learning target is that we should be able to write the domain and range of given graphs in any quality notation and be able to read it in plain English. So let's get into it. Um, we're going to start with some vocabulary. We need to define what domain and range are. So domain, we're going to say, goes from left to right, and it includes all of our x values in the function. Range is just the opposite. Range goes from bottom to top, and it includes all of the y values in our function. Okay? So if you remember, we have two different types of functions. We have discrete functions, and we have continuous functions. We're going to look at how we find domain and range of discrete functions first. So we've got this graph here, and anytime it's pretty straightforward, we're just going to create what we call a set, which is just going to be a list of all the numbers that we have. So our domain is all of our x values. So I'm going to do this in blue. If you would like to color code with me, uh, you're welcome to. It doesn't matter which colors you use. Um, so domain, we need to find, we see that we have these four points here. We need to find the x value of all of our points, since domain is all of our x values. So I'm going to go just left to right. First, I have um, my first point is at negative 4. Right? My next, uh, my moving to the right now, my next point would be here, and we would call this negative 1. So the next value in my set is negative 1. Continuing to move right, I've got another point here at 2, and then my rightmost point is here at 4. So that would just be the domain. We're just taking a list of all the x values going from left to right. Range is the same thing, well, not the same thing, it's the opposite, right? We're doing from bottom to top all of our y values. I'm going to change colors and do this one in red. So let's look at our lowest point is going to be here at negative 3. So that'll be my first point on, uh, on my range. I'm going up 1. My y value here would be negative 2. Going up again, I'm at the point 2. And up one more time, we're at 4, right? So it doesn't matter what the x value is. We're starting from our lowest point, and we only care about what the y value is. So we've got negative 3. This one goes down to negative 2. This one went up to positive 2. And this one went up to 4. So this would be my domain and range of discrete functions. On continuous functions, it can get a little trickier. Um, so we're going to have a little blast from the past here. Um, Back in elementary school, you learned inequalities, and we're going to use those again today. Um, but you might have remembered it as alligator mouths, right? You would be given two different numbers, like let's say 3 and 7, and uh, we were taught that the alligator would open towards the bigger number because it wants the bigger snack, right? So we say our inequality always opens towards the bigger value, right? So when it comes to graphs, we're going to be comparing maybe a number to a set of values, just like we had a set of values up here. Like in this case, um, our x value, so this is all of our values going left to right, our x value starts here, and then all of these points on our graph are to the right of it. And we know that as we go, all of the numbers to the right are going to be bigger numbers than the one we have. See how we start here at 0, and then we've got another point at 1, we've got a point at 2, and we keep going. So in this case, all of these x values are bigger than the starting value that we had at 0. So our alligator mouth is going to open towards the x in this case, because all of these x values are bigger bigger than our original value, our leftmost point. So now we're going to talk about what we call included and excluded values. Right? We say a value is included in the function if it has a closed point or a solid line. In this case, we're going to use 
uh, greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. So we've still got these alligator mouths, but we've got this little line underneath them. So we're going to say we want to add our line under, right? So let's jump back up here to our examples. In this case, we know that 3 is not equal to 7, so there's no need for us to put this line underneath it. 7 is just bigger than 3 every single time you look at it. But in this case over here, I see I have a closed circle here at 0. We know that closed circles means that this value is included, right? So we're going to add this line underneath that, uh, that alligator mouth, that inequality. Because we're going to say that all of these x values in this function can be 0 or they can be greater than 0. If we just do the opposite, we can say a value is excluded if the function uh, is an open circle or an arrow. So we wouldn't be able to have uh, these arrows mean infinity. We wouldn't be able to, to have that. Um, so in this case, we're looking for open circles um, that, uh, that would mean that value is not included. It's not part of, of uh, what we have. Um, so in this case, we use um, just greater than or less than with no line under. Okay, Let's go to the next page, and we're going to uh, try some examples. There's usually just two different types of domain and range questions that you may see. We could either have two endpoints, so the graph is not continuing on forever in one direction, or we could have just one endpoint where the graph is continuing in a certain direction. Uh, let's actually do this one with one endpoint first. So if we have an arrow going in one direction, um, that means we have a stopping point and then we're continuing on forever. So our domain, I'm going to do again in blue, remember is all of our x values. So I need to see what is my one value that I have here. That x value is here at 4. So I'm going to write this point in, that's 4, that's my, uh, that's my starting or stopping point here. And now I need to determine whether the alligator mouth is opening towards all of the x values on the graph, or is it opening towards 4? Which one is bigger? Well, we see that the graph is going this way forever, right? It's going to continue up, and it's never going to stop going to the left, right? It may not go left very quickly, but it's, there's nothing here stopping us from going left. All of these numbers to the left of 4 are smaller than 4. So in this case, all of the x values on our function are all less than 4, meaning 4 is the bigger value. So we're going to open our alligator mouth towards the 4. And now this reads x is less than 4. But we need to decide, is it less than or is it less than or equal to? So I check. Here I have a closed circle. And if we think about the last page, that means that value is included. So I'm going to write that line underneath it. So this would read that the domain is all the x values that is less than or equal to 4. Let's move on to our range now. This is also the lowest point in my function. So I'm going to see this stops at 2, right? We go 1, 2, and that's where our point is. So my y value here is 2. And now I need to decide, is, are all the y values bigger than or are they all less than uh, this value 2? So I see we continue going up and up and up up on this graph forever, all of these values above 2 are bigger than 2, right? So that means that y is the bigger snath. I'm going to open my inequality towards the y. Now we also need to see if we put the line underneath it or not. Once again, that circle is still closed, so I'm going to put that line underneath it. Um, so that way we say that all the, the range is all the y values of this function that are greater than or equal to the value 2. Let's try it with 
two endpoints now. So I see that we start here and we finish here, right, for my domain covering all of my x values. With our definition, we said that the domain always goes from left to right. So we want to start with whatever this leftmost point is. In this case, that leftmost point is negative 4. So we're going to write negative 4 as my leftmost point, right? Then we're going to have our x. And now we want our rightmost point, which is here. And if we follow this all the way down, we see that that value is 1. So 1 is my rightmost point. So now we need to determine whether or not uh, we're going to look at these one by one. So let's see if x is bigger than negative uh, 4. So I see that all of these values go to the right of 4, which means they're all bigger than this value, negative 4. So my alligator mouth wants to open towards the bigger snack, which in this case is x. But I also see that I have an open circle here. So that means there's no need for me to put the line underneath it, because in this case, this graph cannot equal this negative 4 value. My graph continues going right until I hit this value 1 that we said earlier. So 1 in this case has to be the highest value, which means all of the x values are less than 1. So if we're comparing just these two, the bigger snack would be 1. My alligator mouth opened towards it. This is a closed circle, so we are going to put the line underneath it to say that this domain of this graph is between negative 4 and 1. We're going to read this as the domain is negative 4 is less than x, and x is greater than or equal to 1. We're going to do range now. So I have to find my lowest point, and the point may not always be the endpoint with range. I see that this graph goes all the way down to this point right here, right? This point is at negative 4. So my lowest point going from bottom to top for range is negative 4. That's going to be my bottom point. And it goes all the way to the highest value. And we see that there's no value higher than this one at 5. So I'm going to write 5 is my highest value. Okay. Whenever we're, we have two endpoints like this, as long as we set it up going from bottom to top, our alligator mouths are always going to open going to the right. So we're going to say this is like that. right? And that makes sense because we see that starting from negative 4, all of the values on my graph are bigger than negative 4, and all of the values are less than 5. So now we need to figure out, are these values included or excluded? Here, we said we have a solid line. Solid lines are like closed circles. So we are going to put the, the, the line underneath our alligator mouth here. And at 5, we have a closed circle, which we know by this point has the line underneath it. So let's scroll down now. And we're going to try two more examples. This first one has one endpoint, so let's find the domain. The domain we always say is with our x, so we're going to write that down. And this endpoint here is at negative 3. So we're comparing x to negative 3. We need to see which way the alligator mouth opens. Well, I can see that all of the values on this graph are bigger than my starting negative 3, which means x in this case would be the bigger snack. I have an open circle, which means I'm not going to put the line underneath it. So my domain is x is greater than negative 3. My range, this time I'm looking at the y value. So I start from my lowest point, which again is this point, and again, our lowest point on the y-axis is negative 3. 
So to write my range, it's all of my y values compared to negative 3. We can see that this graph is all above this point, uh, or this line negative 3 here, which means y is my bigger snack. We have an open circle, so we're not going to put the line underneath it, which means my range is all the y values that are greater than negative 3. Pause the video now and try and find domain and range of this graph on your own. Hopefully you paused it and tried it. So now let's figure it out. This one has two endpoints. So I'm going to find my first one it is going to be here on the x-axis at 1. And then we have another endpoint here at 5. So my x values have to be between 1 and 5 and my mouth's always open going right. Here at 1 we see we have an open circle so I'm not going to put the line underneath my first inequality. But at 5 we have a closed circle which means I do need to include this value and put the line underneath it. My range on the other hand um, we are going to say my lowest point is right here at this endpoint. That's negative 4 down on the y-axis. But my highest point isn't this point, right? We continue to go up a little bit all the way up to here. That value is 5. Some people may get it confused and say since we have an endpoint here, that value is 4, but that's not the highest. We're looking for the absolute highest point on this graph, which in this case is 5. So all of my y values have to be between negative 4 and 5. So I'm going to write that negative 4 and 5. My inequalities are going to open going right, and now let's see if they need the line. Here I have a closed circle at negative 4. So I am going to put the line underneath it. And at 5, we have this solid line. There's no open circle. There's one really close, but not at this specific point. So we are going to put the line underneath um, our second inequality here. So we would say the domain of this graph is x is less than, sorry, x is greater than 1 and less than or equal to 5. And our range y is greater than or equal to negative 4, but less than or equal to negative 5. This has been our lesson over domain and range. Good luck in your practice, and I'll see you in the next video.